we have said, and I'm, I'm going to elaborate on this whole thing because it's an extreme significance and importance. He said something, I'll use, I'll use the metaphor from our Moshe, rather than using the Kerem de Atsilus, which we don't really relate to those terms. But I want to see, speak from, from, you know, from its significance as, as it is significant to us. So we use the Moshe, which is one of, of many, He said that the human being, as as such, the, the God, the creation, the human being, has inherently human qualities. To the extent that the Yomoda says, for example, that Odem Shein Lebai is in the He doesn't have a home. He's not a human being. And we discussed this many times and you know, to a great extent of clarity because a human being in this world by godly definition is one who's got a task, who's got a mission. It's not just a creature crawling around the earth. He's not a cockroach, he's not even an elephant. He's not even a, a monkey. He's a different kind of creature. He's not a smart animal. He's a godly presence in the world. This is what a human being is. And therefore, in order to represent this godly quality in the world, in order for him to be effective in the world, he has to be represented on the world level. In order to do that, there are all kinds of different means or sort of tailing by which this is expressed. For one, he has a home. A home represents a set place that this is where he is present. This belongs, this place belongs to him. He has a little stake in the world. It's not floating around. By the way, just one for those of us that may immediately ask a question, that does not do with whether you own the house or rent the house, as long as you have a place where you set, and this is the place where you are, where you have a, a permanent residence, whether you have to pay rent for it is, is totally insignificant. It means that you have, a, you have an anchor and you belong here. Along with that, this is all, <coughs> all a means to, to represent the human being in the world. We say a home. And then we say also that, <coughs> as a matter of fact, all the various utensils, all the various tools that the human being uses are representative of who he is. We said many times, a human being eats with a spoon, eats with a fork, with a knife. This is not merely convenience. This is this is respect. Why is it respect? Because it means that he can eat without delving into the food, falling down onto the food like a cat in the food, face into the plate. He remains aloof. He remains where he is, but he has to feed himself, so he's feeding himself. He's feeding himself in a manner that, that not only, <clears throat> not only is his face above, but he's also not totally involved in the food. He just picks up little pieces and he feeds himself. The Allah in Shekhalor says <clears throat> that one must not bite off from a piece of bread that is larger than, 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 than a bite. Bayer, don't two say it says, whatever it is. As we said many times, 
that if you put a loaf of bread on the table, you have not brought, you are not serving bread to the human being. You being a serving bread means you have a slice of bread that is edible on a human level, a respectful level. All this <coughs> is, and, 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 and then, of course, I said everything, all aspects of human behavior. The Ramam says a cloud that a human being, a chokham, which is the primary definition of a human being, is identifiable in absolutely every aspect of his life. But how he walks, how he talks, how he sleeps, how he stands, how he sits, everything. Thus, all utensils a human being uses are representative. He uses them, they are representative of what he is. If he uses a cup, it's not because of a practical convenience only. I thought I you said it. What is it? Oh, 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 okay. I have to take good eye, eye drops. I'll do it. Everything a human being does on a human level is not just external convenience. Those who interpret it as such and say, oh, I can teach my dog also to do this thing. But the dog is never going to learn that which a human being knows inherently. To a human being, this is a human thing. You know the story with the Rambam, with the, with the, with the cat that was serving? You can teach a cat to serve politely, but you can never teach a, to a cat the meaning of serving politely. It's like, you know, he has no idea what it is. So coming back to the motion we used today, I thought it was very, very, very uh, expressive, very clear. And through that, I, I feel that we get a very powerful revelation, clarity. <coughs> he says that Kainim de Atsilus. Atsilus is, we all know, is the, is the, is the highest world. This is what's called Oilam Haliki. It's a godly, godly, godlike world. Godly world. Close, a world that's close to God. And even the Kainim of Atsilus are also pure godliness. Ma'alukus Mamish. From this kelim, then evolved down oilers of Bia, of, 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 of the world of Bri of the created world. We'll now see the difference between Asilos and the created world. What, what, what this is all about. And he says, the created world is almost a created thing. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping. I want to I'm I'm talk in terms of, of the moshul. The moshul is you have a human, you have a human home, you have a table, and the table is clearly a, 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 a human entity. It's a, it's, a, it's a tool for human use that allows a person to to sit around in a respectable and a human manner. table is a conceptualized, so to speak, in the soul of in the in the soul and in the in the in intellect, the human intellect. And then it's brought into a room, into a dining room. And we said it's clear to everyone that the dining room accepts the table smoothly, seamlessly. It's not like you added something to the dining room. In the country, the dining room expected the table. The dining room has, has a, so to speak, a conceptualized table before it even been brought in. It fits in there perfectly. So 
So this table, when it is in the dining room, even though it is a physical structure made of wood of extraneous material completely, but nonetheless, yes, it is a keili, so to speak, a yeshmiyain, a structure, but this structure is so totally representative and united with the function for which it was for which it was designed that there is no it's part of it it's part of the room completely when you enter a dining room you don't ask what's this doing over here not only you don't ask what's this doing here when you walk around the dining room table you're not walking around the table you're walking along the lines that, that this is this is where where you should be walking you're not avoiding the table. You're just walking where you're supposed to be going. The table belongs there. So you're not avoiding the table. The table belongs there, so you're going around where the, that, that was designated for walking around. In contrast, again, to the, the cat that walks around the table smoking on the table. It's, it's being pushed by the table because it can't go through it. A human being doesn't walk around the table. He walks where it is designated for walking because the table is something that belongs there. The dining room and the table are one entity. This is like saying the table, even though it's a structure, is completely united with its source, with the spirit that created it. It's part and parcel of the dining room. Nonetheless, even so, because it is it has a structure constructed from independent materials like wood. And the wood did not come out of this room. It's not part of the room. The wood is, wood is something which was brought in. Therefore, the table, after it is structured as a table <coughs> with the wooden frames, can be taken out of the room. And it will not lose its form. You can't take the table out of the room and put it into the street where it is completely extraneous, completely out of out of context. And yet it keeps its form. That it keeps its form. What, what's that how do we come to this? What's this what's this getting into? How we came to this is to point out that the Kalim are of such uh, um, 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 okay, this is the reason I'm like, I'm jumping around a little bit, you ask me the question. This is the meaning that Kalim the Biya. That oil is the Biya created from the cave. Biya means a created world, which is completely distant from, from, from the essential truth. It's like the outside. The outside of the house, the outside of the room. Again, so the, the table which we just des described as being so unified with the room, and, but indeed it can be taken outside. But indeed, that table can be taken outside. Yeah. Which means, which means you can, you, <coughs> you can bring about a representation of this table in a realm, realm that's completely strange to its source, where it loses completely its connection to the source. That's called Biya. Biya it's a created world. Let us identify this this concept. Created world. Asiya is this lost world. What is the definition of Asiya? The word Asiya means to make, made. Kuna, you're much too serious. My head hurts a little bit. You hurt? Oh, I'm sorry. You want to ask me? No, thank you. I don't. In that case, you can receive this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about your word. I, mean, I know, but we need, we need spirit to understand these words. Not I'm just excited. Uh, I'm, happy. I'm happy. I know you are, but I want you to, to be I want, I want Not to think present. so hard? Not to think so hard. Okay. 
<laughs> Don't worry, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> The significance of this is okay, uh, um, Asiya, so what created the world. What's the world of Asiya? The world of Asiya, this is our world. In our world, when you look at the table, it's hard to connect the table to its source. Is this, this, is, is this a human utility too? It's a, it's a board with four legs. And then, it's a board with four legs, and the carpenter put it together, and, and, and the human being saw it and says, hey, I can use that. I'll learn how to use it. I'll learn how to use it. Now, it's a completely strange thing. I'll make myself use it. This what I see it. Like we talk, we take our, our children and say, Angel, you want to have breakfast? You have to come to the table. Now it's, you, you, you train, you learn the function. Which means it's in a completely different level than the initial union of the table that is, that is really representing the, the human soul, human spirit, human intellect. Eventually, the child will grow, and he will, the thinker will grow, and he will also realize that, yes, this is not something he has to be told to see by a table, but there's no other way. It's entirely normal. But it's conceivable that he is in Oilam Asiya, and you have to remake it. Oilam Asiya, in general, means that it is something which is being built as you go, as you learn. So we, see, we can hear the ready, the readily the, the huge distance and the contrast. Oil Masiya, Oil Masiyus. Oil Masiyus, this is like the, the table in the room, in the dining room, in the human domain, inside the domain, where its function is totally obvious. Not only it's obvious, it's, it's, it's a must. It's, it, it grows out of the room, it's of the reality itself. And then you go outside, where its function has to be first interpreted and has to be learned and has to be taught and forced. It's completely different to different now. You used the word training, but did think we really have to go well, as if it's something completely foreign to us at first? I mean. Well, the, the word training is, for human beings, is totally is incorrect because because there is, okay, without because, we don't use the word training. We teach. We show and we teach. I, I said, I, I, children grew up, little babies grew up in my home, and I saw how they grow. I didn't see myself grow, but I saw them grow. I saw that when my daughter, when she wanted to eat, she insisted to eat with a spoon. But she couldn't pick up the food with a spoon. So she took the food, picked up the food with her finger, put it in the spoon, and then fed herself. How can I eat otherwise? So now we can readily see the different difference, the contrast, the way it is in the original, in the initial state, totally on the human level and, and, and connected to his soul, connected to his intellect. And this is the reality itself. Versus when it goes outside, like the table outside of the, of, of the house, where you have to figure out what is this about? How do you use this, this monstrosity? What's it for? So the Rebbe says, now listen, this is the important thing which we're discussing. The Rebbe says, 
that this state, in its initial state as it is present in the room, where it is obvious what it is about, it doesn't call attention to itself because it's part of the reality of the room itself. That can be discussed. Now, let's take a step further up. Prior to bringing the table into the room, this room was designed to be a dining room. According to the design of the apartment the house, it was clearly designed to be a dining room. But it's a dining room without chairs, without tables. It's a dining room by, by virtue of its design. When you, when you enter this apartment, look around this, I know where the dining room is going to be. I know where the bedroom is going to be. Right? A virtual is of, of, the, of the room itself, although there is no tables and no chairs. So at that point, when there are no tables and no chairs in the dining room, you say you call it a dining room. How do you call it a dining room? There's no dining room, no table. What's the answer? This is the, a dining room at a higher level than the practical level. This is a dining room whether you have a table in there or not. It demands that you put and bring a table in there. And if you don't, something is missing. But there's an inherent reality there, an inherent definition, that this is a dining room. Then you can't take a table and bring it into this room. When you bring the table into this room, it, it, it meshes, it completely fits seamlessly with the room. And here is where, where we need to put our thinking cap. This table, as a concept, pre-existed in this room before you brought a table into it. And now that it is in the room, it fits into it and completely unites, so to speak, seamlessly with the room. It's not a separate entity. So even though it's not a separate entity, it, it matches, it fits in with, with the room. Nonetheless, we can readily understand that the way this table is in concept, which grows out from the room itself, is at a much higher level than when it is already defined in, in, in a structure. It's already defined in a structure, it becomes a separate entity from the room. Whereas when it is viewed from the room, uh, from the, so to speak, the compelling element in the room itself, it is part of the truth of the room itself, it's part of the reality itself. Okay. So these are two different levels. Nonetheless, this level of the Chayra will be very close. This is the concept of the table, and this is the table as it fulfills its concept, because it's not, it completely fits into the environment. So this is, so to speak, one distance, one contrast that we are saying, the contrast of the, of the table, the way it exists in the, in the oil, in the, in the oil of the room, and how it comes into the cave of the, of the, um, of the cave of a table. Compare that with when the table, when you take the table out of context and put it into the street. It is completely out of, out of context. Then you first have to start learning what is the table about? How do you use it? Doesn't have any any sense at all. You have to reconstruct structure it in your mind. And then you can have all kinds of debates. Some people will come back and say, no, no, this is nothing, this is not real in the human being. The human being learn how to use the table. <laughs> you know, the whole upside down of the world because it's so completely out of context.
So compare these two distances, so to speak, the table as it is out of context versus the table as it is in the room in context. That's one distance. The other distance is the table in the room versus the room without the table and, and when the table is only a concept. Which one of these two distances would you think, would you think is greater? You follow what I'm saying? No? I mean distance from the room. A, a, a further, a further out, further contrast, more distant in concept. In, in the context or out of the context? Right. Now, which when you take the table out of the room, into the street, but it makes no sense at all. So you say, hey, this is completely out of out of whack. When it is in the room, it makes sense. Right. So this is a very far, far cry, so to speak. It's idiotic, so almost to compare them. Whereas when you talk about the table inside the room versus the, the, the conceptual ta table, they would be pretty close to each other. Right? So the other know. says, no, not true. Not true. That the conceptual table is further out from the, from the actual table as it is inside the room than the table inside the room from the table outside of the, outside the house. I'm not really good. <laughs> this is what Rabbi is saying. <coughs> it becomes a real mitzvah, a yesh in a creature unto itself, out of context. Then you have to first go and learn what do you do with it. Yet this distance, so to speak, this contrast, is less than the contrast of the conceptual table, the table that goes out of the of the reality of the room, versus the table as it fits into the room. Who is with me over here? Do you understand the, the, the point here? This is a, such a, a significant thing. And the most important thing to me, the reason I'm repeating it so many times, is that when you talk about this conceptual table, you block it, you block it. What we are saying, what we are realizing in discussing this, that there is a truth prior to it being identified. This is what we said several times, human intellect has a truth even before it's identified. It is part of the truth of the human being. Odom Shein Rabbi is any Odom, which means he doesn't have a home, but, he's, but he demands it to be a home. Because without a home, he's not a human being. By being a human being, that way he defines that he has a home. Like we say all the time, you find a drunk in the street, he is drying, he's drunk, and he lies in the gutter, and he says, leave me alone, I'm happy where I am. And you say, he is lying to his teeth. It's not true. You cannot be happy. Because there's a reality in this human being. This reality, this is what's called the inherent truth. This is what's called godliness. Any Kaili that represents that is very distant from that source, even though it is representing. It's very distant from source. Is is distant from that source. Is greater than when you take the keli out of context into the street. You follow what I'm saying? You're taking out of context. It loses completely its connection to the source. It's a meaning. And yet, 
that distance is not as great as the initial distance between the Kali in, as, as a structure versus the conceptual Kali. Okay. So who is with me here? It's just like that, that, like this kind of way you're speaking is very foreign to me. Like you're comparing the table. I know it's very comments. foreign to you. It's very foreign to many of us because it's, it's completely <laughs> foreign to the, to the to the educational system that we grew up with. Because the educational system that we grew up with is based on one, a different principle. This is a principle that everything created itself. We are saying, how oh, God created it. So from that perspective, it's a completely different, different world. God created, that means that, that this, so to speak, was conceptualized on the godly level. We can turn it off. So we can return. I think the other one, at this point, it's cool enough. Again, you can yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, so, uh, are we following this thing? And I feel it's extremely important. Why is it so important? Because this brings us a clarity to what we mean. You know, where, where's the truth? Where's the reality? We say everything is rooted in the nefesh, the rots. Is that real? Is that something that we are just mm. defining? Mm. Are those chairs being used? Right? What? Those chairs are okay? No, no, don't use the chairs. Huh? Don't use those chairs that's on the side. Right. We have we have uh, folding chairs right here. Right here. The other one. Again, I'm insistent and I'm staying on this because I feel this is very important. The whole principle of Emunah in Hashem. So Hashem created everything. We start imagining what kind of entity is this God that created? Can you imagine? Can I relate to that? So we're saying, of course not. It's, an, it's, a realm, it's not a created entity. We know only of created entities. God is not a created entity. Everything that, that, that comes from God, it comes from, from, uh, from, an, from, an, from an initial reality. So we're saying, the initial reality, on the slowest, lowest level, the initial reality of a dining room, how the table exists in the dining room, is greater than the table when it is built and brought into the dining room. Brought into the dining room is still something which had to be structured, had to be built. This is what he says, it has a limit, it has a, a finite presence, rule. But the way it is initially in the dining room, it doesn't have a finite presence. It is present because this is a dining room. Like a, it's present in a human being, the human being has the quality that he is for real in this in this world, that reality is is, is real. Not, it wasn't added to him. It's not design. It's not the design element. So now we are going to whatever it's worth. Whoever is with me, the last. Line on the on page of Gimel on the on the on the, on the top paragraph. Harei sheyesh lahem eze erech. Thus, it means that that they meaning the Kalim. Hello. hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Just before you go on, 
before you go back into the text. Yes, sir. So, the marshal you're bringing here of the table in concept, there's three things, the table in concept, the table in the dining room, and the table on the street. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. What do these things, these things, these three things correspond in the nimshal to what? Okay. The, 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 the table in concept is like the, the table as it is in the oil. Okay. The table in the dining room is like the table is in, in, in oil, is the kalim of oil matzilus. Kalim of matzilus. Right. So it's oil of matzilus, kalim of matzilus, and biyah. And biyah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you didn't hear that because of the sneeze. And Bia. Bia is, Bia is the third thing. Right. Bia is a okay. created world, totally outside of the right. context, of the godly context. It's the table in the street. The table in the street. Okay. Got it. And as I said, what's so important to me is that we should understand that there is a reality that the real the real table is before it was even built into the dining room. There's a reality that is greater than than the presence of the table. <coughs> Which is the conceptual? The conceptual. This is the compelling element. This is the truth. Why? Because it has all the specifics already? <laughs> no, not because he had the specifics. He doesn't need the specifics. Because it is there due to the truth, not due to the practical, to the functional element. I'm just going to repeat and say, no, 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 you, you, you have to understand, you have to understand. I'm sorry, <laughs> we are constantly discussing this, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just repeat it very briefly, so, a home provides a human being comfort, security, <laughs> um, a roof over the head, protecting him against the elements and all that. These are practical things. But this is not what we mean by a home, that a human being must have a home. Because that kind of home, the animal also needs. This thing that needs a home is something which is, which is not an add-on to him. This is something which he defines it as a home. It's defined along with him being a human being. As we said, the type of home is not even a human being. Why? Because by definition, a human being has to have a place in the world. Why? Because a human being has a function and a mission in the world. That's the definition of a human being. This is, means in the inherent reality. The reality as defined by his creator. God gave the human being the term, the name Odom. You know that? You look in the Pumish. Odom is not a, an arbitrary name. <laughs> it's a name that God assigned to the human being. Because God created the human being to be what he is. So, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the, the I see a little questioning on the Meshayim in general. If, if we say that man gave this reality to the human being, the what? Uh, what created the, the reality? You talk to the Creator, created the reality. Why did He create the man in the gutter and the man without a home? He keeps on traveling all the time. What? What? What does this? That is a question you can ask. Of the Creator, that does not que that does not question the fact that, that you created can, him. You can't answer. I, I, well, I can attempt to answer. I don't think it needs an answer. 
because the Gemara says clearly. The Gemara says, Hariyesias Maasai the Gepachte Parnosos. I deviated from God's. I deviated from God's path that He set for me, and this is when I ended up in the Gala. If I had followed the path that they had set me on, I would never fall into the Gala. How how do you define a home? A home is a, is, a, is a definitive place that a person stays on <coughs> in on a permanent basis. All right. So when Avram was told to, to go travel, go from place to place. Wherever he was, he pitched a tent. Wherever he went, he was. He was not a nomad. He always pitched tent. Not only he pitched tent, he had a restaurant <laughs> and a guest house. Yeah. Salvation wherever he was, wherever he was, there's stories or something like that. He has a school. He had a yeshiva. Whatever he was. Yeah, I heard a story recently that the Rebison was speaking with someone. And she was traveling a lot when she was younger. She says they she was living out of a suitcase sometimes. And she says that she made her suitcase was her home. That's she right. Uh-huh. <coughs> All right. So um, as I said, the important thing. That I like, that I'm that I like to emphasize here because this makes it possible for us to focus in and understand the principle of the initial reality. But everything really is a derivative from that. Like we said, a child is t- is shown to, to sit by the table, but the child relates to this perfectly because he understands that. What's the time? I don't know. 9.36. 9.36. Yeah. He, um, he relates to it perfectly, saying, saying it corresponds to some kind of inner sense of how things should be. Uh, in a sense, are, well, I, it's not how things should be. He, in a sense of, of 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 what he stands for, what life is about, mm-hmm. and the, how what life is about automatically translates different circumstances. How things should be when it comes when you eat, how things should be when you walk, how things should be when you talk. You know, Zam says, it's not how things should be. That doesn't define it. it. Defines what he stands for, and then automatically, whatever he does, he does it with that approach. What's the distinction you're making? Hmm? What's the distinction you're making? The distinction I'm making is there is no plan in the in the in the mind in the soul of man what the, that on the t- that table should look like. That's completely that's designed uh, when when the table when, when the necessity of the table is identified. As a matter of fact, there is no design. Of a table in 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 you in you the sign of a table is something that that defines my place. I'm not sitting in the middle of nowhere. It defines a place where I'm sitting. And this place is suited to, to my use. How it stands there, that's not my business. Let the carpenter solve that problem. So as I'm concerned, I need this board in front of me. Let it float. So the phenomenal thing that the Rebbe, that's we're emphasizing and we're going to go further now is that the Kalim the kingdom of Hatzilus, which are which are of course mamash, and I said like like in our motion, it's like like the table inside the dining room where it fully belongs, it fully representative of of its function, of its glorious presence. There's no question. What is this doing? This monstrosity doing over here? It's not a monstrosity. It's a table, a human here too. 
yet still it's it's a far cry very distant from the table as it exists on a conceptual level conceptual level it is it is it, ex it exists because of some kind of fundamental truth not because of a pre of something that was built and made is it, is it because, is it because, we're saying that it, on conceptual level it exists because it represents some kind of fundamental truth. Is it because on conceptual level things don't exist otherwise? I don't understand the question. You, you're saying that, that, that on conceptual level, it's a, the table exists on conceptual level because it represents some kind of truth. Right? It draws, goes out of the truth what a human being is. Yes. So I'm, I'm asking you, is it because, why is it representing truth? Is it because on conceptual level, not truth does not get represented? It does not exist? Avram, I could say yes, I could say no. You, the question is out of context. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not, that, I don't stop at that. What is, what is it because what is because come in here? Well, because in the in in the actual reality, in factual reality, where where table is built, it exists here for a reason. Like because it exists here because it comes from. That's well, exactly that's right. That that's the, that's a big difference. Here it is built. You can have a room without a table and with a table. You brought in a table, you have a reason. But the initial union that there is a table on a conceptual level, there's no because. That's part of the reality. Is there an explanation why a, a human being has to have a place in the world? Because that's what a human being is. By definition. Like we said, this definition is so completely one with the human being that if he denies it, he is lying. Even if he denies it under very, very precarious circumstances, he's lying in the garden of it. You say, he's lying. There's no way that he acquiesced to be in that state. Because it's not him. In other words, you're saying that things, they, they're just made the way they are. Hmm? The things are, they are just made made the way they are. It, it, that, that, that's how they made. I mean, there are human beings and there are dining rooms and who knows what else. And, and they... We're not talking about things that are made. We're talking about the reality itself. Yeah, I understand that. It's not made. What are you saying it for? It's not made. The it's human real. being what, what? has a godly spirit, what's called the Rotson. We said we, the whole, we, we spoke about the Rotson for three weeks. This Rotson defines what the human being is. <coughs> Can you ask why he wants? That question doesn't apply. If you know what you're talking about and say Rotson, you know that why doesn't apply. The Ramam says, I have to take this once, you know, to the court. Ramam says, the first principle is to know that there's a first being. The first principle of intellect is to know that there's a first being. The intellect should ask a question, why is there, there a first, first being? In order for me to relate that there is a first being, I need to know a reason why there is a first being. That make sense? No. Huh? I understand, yeah. If you're speaking about the first being, then that question does not apply. That's the same principle that we are applying here. You have to kind of rise up and start thinking with real human intellect. A 
And human intellect is based on his rot, based on the sense of reality. There is an, an initial reality of truth. That's what we are focusing on. Dr. Cayley expresses the or. Dr. Cayley, right. Expresses the truth of the concept. Right. That's what made his But, it's, but its done. purpose is to capture the or, oh, yeah, not to represent itself. This is when That's you say tacklers. the table is out of context, it's out of the street. <laughs> it, it loses its meaning. It's tactless, it's its function. Well, within the. Um, yet. Yenavram, this is this is why I said this is so important because this opens up, this connects us to our real self. What's connect us to our real self? This insight. <coughs> We're able to see it only because we are really a human being. Yeah. I was thinking the other day, it's in the time it's up, right, basically. And a car engine, a car, has many parts. It has wheels. Oh, the wheels, this is what makes the car move. That's not true. The wheels don't make the car move. It has an engine. The engine makes the car move. That's true. Not necessarily. The engine needs oil. It needs to be oiled. It needs, it needs fuel. The fuel makes the car move. What really makes the car move? Anybody know? For the, the driver. The spark. All the liquids, everything. Without a spark, there is nothing there. A spark is what energizes this whole thing. The spark in the human being is what energizes his whole entire being. His intellect, his thoughts, and everything. His very life. person who wakes up in the morning says, why should I get up? Why should I get up? He's lacking that spark. It's time to get up. Of course it's time to get up. Out of bed. Go right go on. There's a godly spark in us that, that kindles the fuel that we have, the intellect and the emotion and everything else. So the spark is in the Shama? The spark is, the spark is in the Shama, but the Shama is much too high. It is a spark from the Shama, <laughs> which we call the Rotsi. got the point across that I wanted to get across. I hope we, we, we got it. How do I make